How's it going everyone and welcome back to the channel for another Star Wars Battlefront 2 slash Battlefront 2015 video because today we are going to be comparing Star Wars Battlefront 2015 to Star Wars Battlefront 2017. As Battlefront 2 has just had its two year anniversary so it was definitely a good time to reflect back and compare both of these games. As I do actually think that this is a lot closer than most people would originally think. And before we get into it, a big shout out to you guys for coming up with this video idea. Now in this video, we're going to go over things like DLC, game modes, graphics, customization, maps, heroes, and of course, gameplay. And we're going to compare the two and hopefully come to a conclusion by the end. Now we're obviously going to be judging from Battlefront 2015 once it had all of its DLC and Battlefront 2 as of right now. As let's be real, both games when they first came out were basically a big pile of Bantha doo-doo. So the first thing we're going to be comparing in this video is DLC. Now as most of us know, Battlefront 2015 had a season pass which had set dates for upcoming pre-planned DLC and say what you want about the season pass, yes it was expensive, but the content you got was really, really good. This content included the Outer Rim DLC, the amazing Bespin DLC, the sort of controversial Death Star DLC, and finally to close the game out, the brilliant Scarif DLC which ran alongside Rogue One. So the DLC in Battlefront 2015 always felt more formulaic and structured. Battlefront 2 on the other hand is the complete and total opposite. With everything appearing sporadically throughout the game's lifespan and everything just being all over the place. With exceptions, of course, to The Last Jedi, Solo, and Rise of Skywalker DLCs, as they kind of had to be planned. Over the past two years, I have actually seen countless people say that they would rather a paid structured DLC like Battlefront 2015 had, because it means they actually have to deliver the DLC. But because Battlefront 2's was free, we'd get bits and pieces here and there, stuff would get delayed or just seemingly not come at all. Now, that's entirely subjective as to whether you would rather the free inconsistent DLC or the paid structured DLC, that's completely up to you. But now as for the DLC themselves, Battlefront 2015 would drop not only new maps, but along with the new maps, they would also drop a new exciting game mode that wasn't really a ripoff of already existing modes. And of course, two new heroes every single time. So DLC drops for Battlefront 2015 were a massive deal and you could enjoy them for ages without getting burnt out. For an example, in Battlefront 2, when heroes get dropped, they get dropped one at a time, and even to this day, DLC still does get stretched out. The Rise of Skywalker DLC is a classic example of this. Some of it isn't even coming until January, even though the actual release date for the DLC is the 17th of December. So when it comes to DLC, I have to give it to Battlefront 2015. Although it was paid, it was more structured, you got a hell of a lot more, and there was way less screwing around. So when it comes to DLC, like I said, I've just, I've got to give Battlefront 2015 the point here. So now let's talk about the graphics. Now, both games are absolutely amazing in terms of graphics. I remember when Battlefront 2015 first came out and we were all blown away by how incredible it looked. And I must say, it still holds up really well to this day. I've jumped back into it a fair bit lately and the graphics still for the most part, like I said, they, they completely blow me away, but Battlefront 2 took those amazing graphics of Battlefront 2015 and kicked it up a notch. Battlefront 2 is a beautiful game, with some maps looking better than others admittedly, but Battlefront 2 undoubtedly looks the better out of the two games from a graphics perspective. Now, Battlefront 2015 doesn't really have to show off in a big way with, you know, more exotic locations like Felucia, Camino, and even Geonosis to a degree. A lot of the maps Battlefront 2015 had were much more simple. Now, don't let that be of any discredit. Battlefront 2015 is a beautiful game, and it feels so cinematic when you play it. So although Battlefront 2015 may look the cleaner of the two, except for Chewie, he just looked like terrible brown confetti. If you do turn off the HUD when playing Battlefront 2, it is amazing as just to how good the game actually looks. So when it comes to graphics, Battlefront 2 takes the point here. So now, onto game modes. Now, Battlefront 2015 had 14 game modes plus offline modes by the time its DLC had run its course. 
And Battlefront 2, as of right now, has 10 plus offline modes and jetpack cargo, which kind of just disappeared from the game one day. So they're relatively even in terms of the amount of game modes they have, but it's more of a quality over quantity sort of thing. Battlefront 2 only really has a group of about five game modes that people actually play. Unfortunately, a lot of game modes have been completely left for dead, like all the Starfighter modes and some of the smaller game modes. The only ones that people seem to be playing are Capital Supremacy, Galactic Assault, Heroes vs Villains and Co-op, as Co-op is only a four-man lobby. As for Battlefront 2015, there were some seriously dynamic game modes included throughout the game's lifespan. And the vanilla modes that the game had at launch were interesting and fun, like Droid Run was a lot of fun, Hero Hunt at times was a lot of fun, and Drop Zone I personally loved, like with that jump caster combo it was so much fun. And as for the DLC game modes, we got Extraction, which eventually made its way to Battlefront 2 as well. Although in Battlefront 2, the game mode has completely died out. No one really plays it at all. Now, we also had Sabotage, which was introduced in the Bespin DLC, which was so fun to play, in particular on the Carbonite Freezing Chamber map. And in the following Death Star DLC, Battle Station was one of the standout modes. It started with taking down Star Destroyers, then transitioning to the interior of the Death Star to which you had to rescue R2-D2. Then you would go back up in space and attempt the iconic Trench Run. It was one of the more creative modes and it was so fun if you didn't mind flying. And then Infiltration Mode came into the game with the Scarif DLC, which was basically the same as Battle Station, except there was more boots on ground once you got through Scarif's shield gate after the space battle. For me, this one is just incredibly easy. Whilst Battlefront 2 has capital supremacy, it's still a fairly limited mode. And in my opinion, it just it cannot compete with the likes of Battle Station and Infiltration in Battlefront 2015, which were just incredible. And I really hope we get something like that in Battlefront 2. So for this round, I've got to give the point to Battlefront 2015 for the game modes. But now let's talk about heroes. This is a big one. Now the differences between the heroes in these two games is absolutely huge. Battlefront 2015 had six heroes at launch, which was pretty damn bad, but then got a further eight in the DLC, which brought together a respectable roster. Battlefront 2, on the other hand, had 14 heroes at launch, with two more being added a month later after the game came out, these two being Finn and Captain Phasma. And since then, we've had four heroes added, which were actually a really good four, those being General Grievous, Count Dooku, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Anakin Skywalker. We also have two more on the way in the coming weeks in the form of BB-8 and BB-9E, which in my opinion shouldn't be heroes, instead maybe reinforcements, but oh well, what can you do? So I think Battlefront 2015 done a much better job in making the heroes feel like actual heroes as they were tanky as hell and you could just about one shot most of the infantry. It was much easier to rack up the kills, but the trade-off was your health didn't regenerate unless you were Palpatine or Leia and could spawn a health boost. Battlefront 2 trades all of that in for more vulnerable heroes that require a bit more skill. And you can't just randomly stumble across a hero token to get yourself a hero, you actually have to earn it in Battlefront 2 and that's a massive plus. And keep in mind, the heroes in Battlefront 2 can regenerate their health through getting kills. So whilst the heroes don't feel as unstoppable anymore, it was probably better for the gameplay. So when it comes to heroes, I'm gonna have to give the point here to Battlefront 2. So now onto the maps. Now the maps in both of these games are very different for the most part. The map design is all over the place in Battlefront 2 with some maps being extremely unbalanced and spread out and some being really good and nice and linear to keep things easier. Whilst Battlefront 2015 on the other hand, particularly the bigger maps is much more narrow and basic given that in Walker Assault, the game has to follow the walkers. Sullust, which was one of the best maps, has an open area in the middle with indoor areas off to the side. Whereas Battlefront 2's equivalent, Galactic Assault, is much more spread out and the maps tend to be a little bit bigger. As for the smaller maps, and I think this is where it's easy to split the two games apart, I think the Battlefront 2015 maps were way more interesting than the Battlefront 2 maps of the same size. The Bespin maps were all fantastic, with the Carbonite Freezing Chamber being an absolute standout. The Outer Rim maps were also a lot of fun and very interesting, but the smaller game mode maps in Battlefront 2 are just a little bit uninspired in my opinion. 
Whilst they all play well for the most part, they tend to just be a section of a pre-existing Galactic Assault map, and that for me is kind of lazy. Granted, there are some smaller game mode only maps, and they are probably the best ones in Battlefront 2 if you ask me, but Battlefront 2 cuts corners with its maps a fair bit, and Battlefront 2015 has the more interesting maps, and in my opinion, better map design overall with less of those terrible choke points that clog up Battlefront 2's gameplay, and yes, I'm looking at Naboo. So for that, I just have to give it to Battlefront 2015 here. But now let's talk about the customization. Now, I always personally liked the customization in Battlefront 2015. It was limited and basic and I really liked that. Getting to save up for all of these goofy alien skins and then getting an outfit to go with it was all the customization that I think most of us at the time wanted. And it was great that the emotes played a big part in what alien skin you were gonna choose. And for the Empire, the customization was awesome. Unlocking the Shadow Trooper, I still remember, was a grind that we just all loved and although it was simple, I think it pleased a lot of people. Now Battlefront 2 at launch was not great in terms of customization, but throughout the game's lifespan so far, we have seen it change pretty drastically with the clone customization getting its own specific update because there was that much there. You can choose what legion of clone trooper you want as well, like if you want phase 1 or phase 2 clone variants, the choice is yours, which I think is a great touch to the customization. As for the rebellion and the resistance, the alien species are basically what we got with Battlefront 2015, except you can't go crazy with the outfits. Now also keep in mind there wasn't many hero skins in Battlefront 2015, it just depended on what map you were on. But that has all changed in Battlefront 2 in a big way. There is like 30 plus hero skins, probably 40 plus hero skins with three more on the way. My only gripe with Battlefront 2's hero skins is that there isn't enough of them for the villains. Like Han Solo just by himself nearly has more hero skins than the entire villain roster and I think that needs a bit of fixing. But anyway, moving on, we also have a ton of reinforcement skins in Battlefront 2 now after a very recent update, so that further improves Battlefront 2's position when it comes to customization. So whilst Battlefront 2015's customization was really fun and, you know, really goofy, it was super basic when you compare it to Battlefront 2, which just has an absurd amount of skins across all playable characters. So this one is very easy. Battlefront 2 takes the points when it comes to customization. But now, lastly, that leaves us with gameplay. So the overall gameplay for both games, in my opinion, is very different, and it does ultimately come down to what you prefer. Battlefront 2015 is a bit more casual and basic, whilst Battlefront 2 is a bit more complicated and skillful. The weapon selection was better in Battlefront 2015 as opposed to Battlefront 2, like in my opinion, and the star card setup was super tailored to how you wanted to play the game but a jump pack was a necessity, so the gameplay tended to just result in people jetpacking all over the place. Now, whilst that was fun, it wasn't great for the gameplay. Also, the Starfighter gameplay was massively improved in Battlefront 2, and it's stupidly underplayed by the player base, as it improved Starfighter gameplay in almost every single facet. And yeah, I just don't think that the Starfighter game modes in Battlefront 2 actually get enough credit. But anyway, Battlefront 2015, like I said, has some pretty basic gameplay and it works well for what the game is offering. Have been said that, some aspects of the gameplay have not aged well at all, in particular the hero combat, specifically with lightsabers. Looking back now, the lightsaber combat in Battlefront 2015 is pretty bad. It's just repetitive swiping with a stun animation and it's, like I said, it's kind of bad and it just has not aged well at all. And the hero abilities didn't really do anything except deliver damage when it was on like another hero. There wasn't really any animation except for when you used your abilities on troopers. Like when it comes to troopers, Vader's force choke would lift them in the air and Luke's force push would send them flying, which is always satisfying. But when Luke and Vader fought each other, it was just a mess. Now, fast forward to Battlefront 2 and the gameplay feels much better. You can roll backwards, forwards and sideways with the infantry and also dodge in the same way with heroes, which is a big improvement. And the hero gameplay overall is by far and away improved in Battlefront 2. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it is still miles better. The hero gameplay feels a little less basic, like you can be ragdolled around the place when, you know, abilities get used on you. Like, if you get choked, you go up in the air. If you get pushed or pulled, you get ragdolled in the corresponding direction. 
And as for the lightsabers, there is much more to it this time round. And the 1v1 combat can actually be really interesting, like so much so that YouTubers have 1v1 series on their channels. The lightsaber swings feel much more fluent and the animations actually look really clean and realistic. Ray even kicks enemies mid lightsaber combo, which I thought was a really cool addition. So between all of the gameplay improvements that Battlefront 2 made over Battlefront 2015, it gives it the edge pretty easily here. The sequel should improve the gameplay and it certainly did this time round. So Battlefront 2 takes the point here and takes it out as the superior Battlefront game. So although Battlefront 2 takes it out as the victor, I think it's more than fair to say that the finished product of Battlefront 2015 was a ton of fun and a great Battlefront experience. I seriously think that between the two EA Battlefront games, there is the perfect Battlefront game in there somewhere, as both games excel in their own ways. But as it should, Battlefront 2, I believe, is the better of the two, as like I said, it should be. If we were comparing Battlefront 2015 to the launch date of Battlefront 2, I would honestly have given Battlefront 2015 the cake, but you know, each game after two years had developed into two great games. And although I chose Battlefront 2 as the winner, both of these games are exceptional in their current states and you can have fun with either one of them. But anyway, guys, be sure to let me know what you think of this in the comments below. There's plenty of love for both of these games out there, so yeah, be sure to post your thoughts in the comments. Now, this video has been pretty long, so I won't keep you guys here for too much longer, so thank you all for watching. Be sure to drop a like on the video if you did enjoy, as it does help out the channel a great deal, and be sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. So yeah, that does it for this video, so thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a great day, and I'll talk to you all next time.